What's going on turd nerds? Matt with Operator Mindset here and in today's video it's all about glassware. We're going to be covering different kinds of glassware, their uses, uh, information about those regarding them, and as well as some stuff you might see on your exam could help you get you a point or two. So if you are in the wastewater laboratory field, if you're about to go sit for that wastewater laboratory exam, if you're an operator and you have a laboratory yourself or you probably even use a few of these items maybe when you're running your tests, it's going to familiarize you with them, let you know what they are, let you know what their uses are, and hopefully help you, again, either on the test or just in life in general, right? Make sure you like the video. That might even get you a point on your exam. Probably not, but you can still like it, right? Because, look, turd nerd. Anyways, let's get to the video. Hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the lab. We've got a variety of glassware here. We're gonna cover each of them. Again, their names, different reasons why you might be using it, their purpose, and hopefully you'll gain a little bit of knowledge from the video. So, getting started. We're gonna start with the beaker. Probably the number one most recognized piece of glassware up here. The beaker's main purpose is to hold that liquid, whatever it may be, okay? We use ours, actually these smaller ones here, to hold our pH standards whenever we're calibrating our pH meters, okay? You could pour something from a bigger sample jug into this guy in order to get a reading on it, whether that's pH, whatever it may be. That's kind of the all-purpose uh, glassware of the bunch okay it's got a variety of uses the biggest thing to remember though when you're talking about a beaker is just because that thing says right there 140 or 120 that does not that's not a, that's not an accurate thing that's a close to they actually even say it on the side of the beaker here. it says approximate volumes okay they are not going to contain exactly what is in what that number is on okay it's going to get you close but it's not gonna be 100% guaranteed that 140 mark. That's the biggest thing to remember when you're talking about glassware, okay? That is TD to deliver or TC to contain. We're gonna get into those in detail a little bit later on in the video, but that is two very important things you should remember when talking about glassware, all right? Moving on, let's talk about the close number two. That is gonna be the graduated cylinder, all right? This guy right here, pour a sample up into him, he's gonna get you very, very close. Again though, not a guarantee. This is going to be a two deliver, okay? It does not gonna contain exactly 190. It's gonna get you very close for certain tests, anything process control wise, guys, these guys have great uses for. They're gonna get you very, very close, all right? Now, regarding the grade of glass that you're gonna be using, there are two Excuse me, I said grade. There are two classes of glass, all right? You have class A and you have class B. Those are also written on the glass itself. If you can see those lines there on this class A graduated cylinder, see how close those are? Now we're gonna compare. You have the class B and the class A. I'm trying to hold them level, it's hard. Anyways, you can tell the class A glass has more lines. Therefore, it's gonna have a higher accuracy than the class B. Now again, neither one of these guys are going to deliver you exactly that volume. The graduated cylinder is gonna get you a lot closer than the beaker, but it is not gonna be dead on like some of the other glass we're about to get to. But before I move on, let's talk about two things, and that's gonna be plastic versus glass. One thing you should remember is that glass is always going to be more accurate than plastic. Because of the way the glass is made, because of the way it's etched, it's always going to be more accurate. All right? Plastic, not saying there's anything wrong. Maybe all you have is plastic in your lab. That's okay. Again, this right here, this guy is going to get you close, okay? The main thing to remember is if you're asked what's more accurate, Glass or plastic, glass is gonna be your answer, okay? Always. Now, before we get into the really accurate guys, I wanna talk about these two fellows right here, okay? These are just simply some flask 
Erlenmeyer Wild, Wild My Flask. This right here is a flask, but it's got this little unique thing right here. That is a vacuum flask. So, for certain tests, TSS, mixed liquor, all that stuff, you hook a hose up here, connects to a pump, it's actually gonna pull the liquid out of your sample. It's gonna land in the flask, just like a vacuum would. It's gonna vac out that, and all that's left on your filter then is the solids, and that's what you want. These guys, very useful. Again, approximate volumes. They are not going to be 100%. If I pour up 500 right here, that does not mean that there's 500 in here. It's gonna be close, but it could be a little above, could be a little under, okay? Um, these are great for holding samples, pouring, again, pouring from a bigger jug into this guy so you can deliver it to more approximate volume, all of that stuff. All right, it's very important to remember regarding glass, but still very good thing to utilize in your laboratory. Now, on to the big dogs, okay? And that is the volumetric flask. You can tell they look a lot different, all right? A lot different from the other glassware we've been seeing, all right? These guys are made specifically for one volume. You should remember that. A volumetric flask or a volumetric pipette is made specifically for one volume, all right? I'm not gonna pour up 100 mils into here because it's rated for 100 mils. And then try to pour up the same 50 mils and split it, okay? They have this great little line right there. You see him? You fill your meniscus up to that line and this is guaranteed to contain 100 mils. Volumetric flasks are great for delivering a precise volume when you need to be extremely precise. That's regarding your permit sampling, that's regarding your creating standards. These guys are great for that, okay? Along with the volumetric pipettes. They are used for one volume. That's the big takeaway there, okay? They all come in various sizes, depending on the size batch you're trying to create, whatever that may be, your standard or whatever size you know, sample you're trying to pour up, you could use these guys. You do the one that utilizes it for you the best. Now, the last piece of glassware we have up here is the BOD bottle, all right? If you ever run this test, you know the test requires a whole lot more. So the BOD bottle is used in your BOD testing, all right? I don't know a lot of people that go out in the field, pour up a sample in a BOD bottle, and then come inside, pour it up to test it. If you did, I mean, you could do it that way, but just collect it in the beaker and quit having to wash more glassware. The big thing to remember about the BOD bottle is it can hold 300 mils. Now, that is on your formula sheet, the same formula sheet you're going to be given on your exam. You go down to the terminology page where they tell you what each one is. They're going to have BOD bottle, 300 mils. It's right there on your formula sheet, but if you're watching this video, guess what? This could gain you a point on your exam. If you are asked that question, how many mils go into a BOD bottle? Guess what? It's 300 every single time, okay? They also make these disposable in plastic, and if you're a laboratory that's running BOD tests and that's what's best for your budget, then kudos to you and do that. But this is a piece of glassware BOD bottle. It's used specifically for the BOD test. If you see this around your lab, now you know what it is. BOD bottle. So, let's get into how to pour up a sample. Let's say all I wanted to do was get me 50 mils in this graduated cylinder. We're going to talk about how to do it the correct way so that it gets you exactly where that bubble needs to be on the line. All I've done, guys, is taken these two guys, one volumetric flask and one graduated cylinder, and I've filled them up with water. Now, I'm going to attempt to hold it on camera and show you exactly where to fill that line to. But, real quick, before we talk about where to get the line to, we need to talk about how we are actually pouring it up, whether you're pouring something in or whether you're using an old handy-dandy water bottle like I'm using here. The thing you want to remember you should remember is holding it at a 90 degree angle, eye level. That's what you want. I'm not going to be dead on if I'm holding it down here, just, you know, listening to a podcast or if I'm holding it way up here. 
think about the perspective at which I'm pouring, right? You want it to be eye level. You want to see where that bubble is. To clarify, the bubble we're referring to is the meniscus. That's not the tendon or ligament, whatever that is in your knee. That is the bubble, but we're going to be at eye level. That is a 90 degree angle. Remember that. Could help you out. So we're going to get you right here. We're going to get that line. I don't know. Is my mustache in the way? Help? Actually, that does help. Pretty good. All right. So we're going to hold it up. We're going to line it up with my eyes because, right, what I just tell you, eye level. All right. And we're going to simply add the water. You're going to start seeing that bubble rise, and then we're going to stop it and try to get a close-up of that meniscus. Let's see if I can get this on the first shot. Ah, I'd say that's pretty dang close. We might be a hair above it, but yeah, that's a great shot right there. Oh, it's getting on me. Get off of me. There you go. Stay on the bubble. Y'all see the line? That is the line that is guaranteed to be 100 mils, and you see where that meniscus is? That bubble, the bottom of the bubble there, it's right on top of that. It's actually even a hair high. You could set it right on that line. That's what you want to guarantee this guy's going to give you what you want. So, let's try it again. Here we go. We are using the graduated cylinder, and we're going to attempt to get that 50 mil line on the bubble, okay? I got it filled. Here we go. We're going to go eye level. Let's see what you got. Don't mess up. Everyone's watching. Woo! That's hard to beat right there. I mean, if they had a competition, I might have just won first place ribbon. There's no way of knowing for sure. But let's get me in the background there. Try to turn it around so you guys can see. Oh, man. So close to get a shot. We might have to throw in a still shot. It's okay. I'm shaking. I'm nervous now. Just one first place. You would be too. You'd be nervous. Let's throw a still shot up there and I'm going to show you these meniscuses in real time. But the thing to remember while you're looking at that is the volume, the, the where that meniscus is placed on top of that line is what's going to guarantee you what you want out of that particular piece of glassware. Okay. Very important thing to remember there is that bubble's called the meniscus. That's bubble being on that line is what's going to guarantee you it's an accurate pour every time consistency it's very important and then the 90 degree angle the eye level part that's what you want to remember could be a potential point on an exam so now that you've seen all this glassware here hopefully it can help you in your journey whether that's laboratory, uh, wastewater laboratory, or your operator's test. If you're walking through your lab and you see these guys hanging up on the wall or sitting in the cupboard, now you know kind of their general use. You can strike up a conversation with the lab guy instead of being so cruel and mean to him all the time, right? We're all turd nerds at heart. That's why we're all together. That's why we're here. We're changing the mindset. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. It really helps us out and get out there right start up start up a conversation use some of this stuff learn more about it it's all gonna help advance you in your career whether that is laboratory analyst or wastewater operator hope you enjoyed the video let's get out there make it happen turn nerd out